Nick Cannon mornings on Power 106. It is that time for up close and personal conversations. Yes, close conversations that people that uh, with people that I admire, people that I look up to, that are just fixtures in the game. And this gentleman is all of the above and so much more. Uh, a true player for real, uh, but an OG. And you know what I mean? The one and only Dennis Graham. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> in the building. Man, I'm I am so interested and intrigued uh and, and fascinated by you, my brother. I mean Thank you, my brother. I, I just love how you move. And I think one of the reasons why um I, I'm always like looking at you is because you remind me of my pops. Yeah. Uh in a way where my dad is just, he's always around. My, my dad is, is, as I call him, a gentleman of leisure. Uh, he, he actually comes from the ministry, but even now he just just be chilling because he's my pops. Yeah. So he does stuff for the community. He's a community activist. Uh, and he just living a life. And, I, and when I see you doing your thing from your music to how you move around, I, I catch up with you in the club every once in a oh, while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just seem like you having a good time and enjoying life. Is, is that what the case is, man? Yeah, I'm trying to take it out like it's supposed to be. Although, <laughs> take it uh, as it's supposed to be. <laughs> Although your dad's in the ministry <laughs> and I'm the sinner on the <laughs> other side. So, Ain't nothing uh, wrong. Hey, two, two of a kind, as I say. Now, uh, we were chopping it up a little bit, and you're telling me, man, all your life, your, your main occupation has been – the music. You're yeah. a musician, 100%, from all from the days had. of Memphis to right now. Man, I have been in this business all my life, uh, long before. I was just saying the other night that uh, uh, long before Drake was born, I was uh, signing autographs, taking pictures with people before he was even born. So it's... Uh, some something I've done all my life. I mean, it, yeah. I played with uh, some of the biggest people in the world. Uh, drums, uh, who I won't mention because uh, I don't like them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, as you, that's how you talk that talk. That's real. But then, how does I mean, being a musician all your life, and then you give birth to an icon. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the, in the music game. I mean, and beyond. Just entertainer in general. I mean, he's done things that no other artist will ever do and that's your son. You instilled that in him, man. Like, uh, how does that feel? It's amazing, man. Uh, uh, we, Drake and I made a bet. Uh, <laughs> he was five years old. Uh, he was five or uh, seven. Yeah. Um, he uh, said that. You sure he wasn't the six God? At the uh, yeah, he so. may have been six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was probably six. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. He said, Dad, I'm going to do more music than you ever did. I'm going to do more movies than you were ever in. Uh, I was an actor. Uh, I started out as an actor in, in Hollywood. Really? In 1977. Really? <laughs> yeah. What was you using? Shaft or uh, Superfly or something like that? No, I did uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, detective stories uh, in Toronto. Oh, okay. I just moved up to uh, Toronto. Because um, they were they had a budding film industry up in Canada during right, the time, as they still right, do. Right, right, yeah. right. And he said that. I'm going to do more movies than you ever did. I'm going to do more music than you ever did. So I said, okay, well, let's make a bet. <laughs> I said, I'll bet you $5 you don't do it. Mm. You can't top me in what I've done. Wow. Uh, and uh, 2009... I paid him. <laughs> you had to. You had to get. You had to come up off that five. No, that was when Young Money signed him. I, uh, I had to give it to him. He, he, yeah. he won. Yeah, Trust he, me. big time. He won. But you, you won this morning actually because you know you you had a song called "That on That" that we yes. played on Power One Hundred Six, yeah. and we allowed the the public to vote. We put a Drake song. He was behind bars freestyle against that, and you won fifty five percent to forty five percent, man. I just want to say I won. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a lot of fun with this, man. But I, I'm I'm super intrigued to know, like, based off of the relationship, and like I said, maybe it's even this, a similar relationship with my father, because I know my father like put a lot of values in me early on mm -hmm. but 
my father wasn't there the entire time. I have a very similar situation right. to where, you know, my mother was a single mother and had to do a lot on her own. And there was a, a, a large amount of time where my father wasn't around. But then obviously me and my pops is super cool now. Right. Is there, do you have to deal with any of that, that stuff from like, the upbringing of Drake and him kind of living in in uh, Toronto without you at times. We hear it in his lyrics sometimes. I, uh, I, I had a conversation with Drake about that. I have uh, always been with Drake. Mm. I talk to him, if not every day, every other day. Wow. Um, and we, we really got into a deep conversation about that. Um, I said, Drake, why are you saying all of this uh, different stuff about me, man? Like, uh, uh, this is not cool. And uh, he goes, Dad, it sells records. <laughs> uh, I said, okay, well, cool. I wish my dad yeah. was that understanding. Yeah, talk about me. Nah, because there's, there's times I feel oh. like even my dad, who's like one of my guys right now, one of my closest friends, and we, we've had, you know, different times uh, where even that beats be six months I wouldn't speak to my dad just you know as a kid growing up or you know he lived in North Carolina I lived out here on the west right. and you and as as a grown man I could step back because I'm a father myself now I could say like oh man I I understand where my dad was coming from where he probably wanted to be there he wanted to to spend more time but he had other children he was he was trying to become the man that he is today. So I don't hold any grudges, right. but then there's certain things where I was like, even as a father who's now, you know, dealing with the unorthodox household to where I, all, you know, my I have baby mamas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I wanna be able to speak to my children every day or even the days where I'm at work or they're moving around that they feel that their father's presence is there because it's super important. But... I also appreciate the fact that I was allowed to become a man and figure some things out on my own. And as like even, even like my character in Drumline, I was like, man, I did it without you. Like I, I have that, I have that like that thing with my dad was like, yo, I I respect you as a man. You respect me as a man. Right. And you've instilled some great things in me. Right. But it's still like I didn't come up in that household where it was a mother and a father right. in the same household. My parents, I feel like. I always tell people my my parents got they had sex one time and, and they had me yeah, like because yeah, they were yeah, teenagers. Uh, yeah. So I I have a different story, but I think it's actually brought me and my parents closer together because I feel like we kind of grew up at the same time. So is there is there any is the way because it is an unorthodox situation? Do you right. feel like that birthed the artist that we know as Drake? Like because the fact that he Drake is a little bit of everything. He's he he's American. He's Canadian. Right, right, he's right, black. Right. He's uh, Jewish. Right, like yeah. he gets to have so many people's experience, and I think that's kind of what makes him unique. And yeah, you were a part of that. Yeah, he uh, well actually uh, a lot of people don't know. Um, Drake has, I, I took Drake down through there, so to speak. Mm. I, t I, I exper uh, exposed him to every aspect of life. I never hid anything from him. I never uh, um, uh, uh, kept anything from him. I took him down through there and I showed him this side of life. I showed him that side of life. Right. Uh, we, we, um, He's always been around music. My family is uh, uh, all about music. Um, uh, my uncle Willie Mitchell, who was uh, discover uh, Al Green. Oh wow! Um, uh, from Royal Studios, ever since 1957, six or seven, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. I uh, I took Drake down through there, and I took him with me, and I showed him. I used to let him shake tambourines with me on stage. I did a matinee <laughs> on Sunday. Oh wow! On Sundays uh, in Toronto. That's crazy. Um, and he, sh I take him with me every Sunday from two to five. Wow! And uh, uh, let him shake the tambourine on stage. So, <laughs> so that 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 instills something in a child. I don't know if you've seen this little kid, uh, baby boy drummer. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's oh, outstanding. He's he is he's just incredible. phenomenal. Yeah. And because you, when you take a child and you expose them to that at an early age, um, they're bound to make it. Yeah. They're, they're bound to be somebody. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So uh, So you knew. You knew. Fred. I knew. I mean, we started Drake out in print work. 
Really? Uh, he did a, a, a print work for Toys R Us, uh, Sears, um, the Royal Bank of Canada. They had a big, big uh, um, a banner in the Royal Bank. Right. Had Drake's picture on it uh, when he was five. Wow. Yeah. And um, well, we uh, we started him out in the business, you know, like this is something he wanted to do because he saw what I was doing. So yeah. he was really interested in it. He was trying to follow in Pop's footsteps. Yeah, wow. And that's like, I, I became aware of Drake because uh, I was an executive at Nickelodeon here in the States. Right, right. And, on, and uh, actually, I was over what is called Teen Nick or The End, which yeah. aired Degrassi. Yeah. That yeah. was so, and I, they was like, yo, there's this kid on Degrassi that does music. And I was like, where? And being somebody came up on Nickelodeon, right. did music right. as well, right. Right. I was like, yeah, he's, that's, he's gonna have a tough time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. because, especially yeah. in hip hop, because once you get this child star label on you, or even, you know, even the brand Nickelodeon, even though like you guys were, or you know, Drake was shooting Degrassi in Canada, but it aired on, you know, pretty much Nickelodeon here. Right. And you know, the the, the wheelchair Jimmy character, yeah. I was like, I don't care what kind of music he got, it's gonna be an uphill battle for this young man. But right. he took that task yeah. and aligned himself the proper way. Right. And, all I could do is step back and be proud because I know the difficulty coming from that the exact same situation right. of somebody who has, you know, a love and passion for music, right. but the audience sees you as a different way and he overcame those obstacles. So I've always saluted him in that space because I remember, right. I remember the the song, I remember every movement, I remember they did a little cribs joint on him where they went to his house. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And this was before he, and he was kind of showing off right, uh, right. like his closet and all that stuff and I was yeah, like, I remember that. He was yeah. trying, to, trying to get it done and it was all perseverance. And I actually saw this happen where there were so many people, even in Toronto, the, the cast that was popping at the time and even in New York, that was not feeling him. Right. That was like, yo, this is never going to work. Yeah, right. This is, this is this, he, you can't rap and sing and be, be on yeah. the TV and uh -huh. light skin, all of this stuff. And it was just like, this is, <laughs> yeah. and he just stuck to it. And of all the cats that wasn't feeling him, are so jocking to be down with him yeah. to this day. So, like, when I hear his music and his lyrics, I'm like, I, it resonates with me differently right. than I would say others because, like, not only did I see it firsthand, but I've experienced it. Right. And I and I love to hear him boast. I love to hear him say he's the greatest and he's the best. And I'm one of, I put him in my top five right. often right. because right. It, he's that that level of of greatness yeah. whether like the numbers don't lie and his artistic ability doesn't lie how does that make you feel as a father to see not only him not only all of the accolades and stuff but to see him overcome so many obstacles and so many haters and naysayers that didn't believe and now he's one of the best to ever do it i i remember when drake was writing stuff into his little journals uh, um and he um Started and uh, and and we had we had conversations about this about how you uh, uh, wait Drake writes in journals. Well, uh, writing his song. <laughs> oh, I was like, like Drake got a journal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I call it a journal because <laughs> it was something that he said. But uh, yeah, he he started writing a long time ago, and he he wrote all this stuff in in in, in a little tablet, and. Um, this is where he went back to. I mean, he wrote so much that he went back to the, the tablets that he had written from years ago and actually uh, uh, used some of that stuff uh, to come out when he signed with Young Money. Mm. And what what Drake's, uh, um, the, the reason that he is who he is right now, because Drake didn't write rhymes he, he he actually told a story, mm. and that's that's a key. If you tell a story, people will listen to you. Right. If you're talking about short shouty in the club, <laughs> then you're gonna be uh, overnight. Right, right. You'll be gone overnight. Right, you know, right. You know, you're talking about strippers and shorty in the club. Ain't nothing wrong with shorty in the club and the strippers. <laughs> we like them. We can tell some stories about them. <laughs> 
<laughs> but y'all hear what you're saying. You gotta have yeah. some substance. You gotta have substance. I mean, like if, if, if you're if you're talking about something that people are feeling that they can actually feel, right? Uh, you know, like hey, man, I just had this experience last week, right? You know, so Facts. they're gonna be able to relate to that, right? But if uh, I mean, like you, you gotta, this is how you capture people's attention, right? You gotta talk about something. That they that's relatable. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Nah, uh, indeed. And, uh, and and that's the thing too. I'm I'm so fascinated by you, sir, that that you know, we can talk Drake all day long, but I wanna know more about Dennis. Like this this journey, this story. I want how do we start off in Memphis and get to where we are today? You sound like you've always just been an entertainer. But even like from Memphis to you tell me to Vegas, then Vegas to to right. to Canada, like right. you you was that you was a player player. Like I, I, how did you go from Memphis and then just move all around the world? What what yeah, what moved hey, you? I listen, I started off that this is where my journey began. I started off in Memphis at the age of uh I was probably 13, 14, and I don't know if you remember uh, the the uh, round bathtubs, metal bathtubs that people used to take a bath in. <laughs> I've seen them in the movies, yeah. yeah, yeah huh. um, I... <laughs> Yo, you got you got started from the bottom as you there we go. As, man, we, that, was, that was a perfect cue. The perfect cue. He telling us where he started in the metal yeah. metal bathtub and started from the bottom. Now we here. I love it. That couldn't have been any better. He taking us back to the bottom. Uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> I started off uh, 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 playing a, a, a metal bathtub as a bass drum, like the like uh, uh, Fat Albert, like in the yeah, junkyard yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> junkyard Dennis. <laughs> uh, 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 I started off playing a metal ba- bathtub as a uh, a bass drum, and my cousin uh, Aaron Morrow, st- he played the cardboard box. So we had a <laughs> bass and snare, <laughs> and we played. No, no, listen, this, That's this real. gets very interesting. Uh, one day we were out uh, in our neighborhood playing, um, and we had the little girls that were our majorettes, you know, like right. dancing down the street. Absolutely. And uh, over at the Sheraton Hotel, uh, this this gentleman came out on the balcony, and he heard us playing. We were right facing the Sheraton uh, ho- uh, Hotel there. And uh, this gentleman heard us playing, so he, he, he called me. Uh, he said, come here for a second. Uh, I walked over to the uh, balcony of the hotel. I said, "Man, you guys sound good." Uh, I mean, this is a, a bathtub and a cardboard box, <laughs> right? And it turned out it was uh, James Brown. Whoa! Yeah. Wait, James Brown saw you playing in a bathtub Brown and a cardboard box. Called me over to the balcony. He said, "Wait just a second. Uh, uh, so he goes and knock on the door, and he he brings his drummer out. Wow! And he said, uh, "Give him your drums." That's where I got my first set of drums from. James Brown gave James, you your first set yes of drums. Sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. That's, from That's my first the set of drums. Legacy drum greatness now. right there. Yeah. Now. now, and I always wondered, I mean, you can tell, we can clear this up right now. Is there any relation to Larry Graham? Or? Larry's my cousin. Yes. Really? Hey. I thought y'all just had the same mustache. Hey, no, 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 no. Larry's my cousin. So, yes. and, and so you got... He just called me last week. Actually. Really? I don't know. So that the Grant family has a real legacy of, of musical greats. Yeah, man, we, we've been. That's the people that want in a million <laughs> yeah. chance of a lifetime. <laughs> That's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> wow. So so even coming up, did you ever? Did you guys work on music together? Or? You know what? We we ran into each other in Hollywood back in the seventies. Uh, I lived. Uh, in, in Hollywood in, in the 70s, uh, 19, from 77 to 83. So you was already out here? Yes. Even before Drake was born, 77 yeah, to 83. Man, I moved from here in 83 uh, to Canada. Oh, okay. Wow. What you do? Why you go from Hollywood to Canada? You was, what you chasing? Uh, what you chasing, I, Dennis? I met a woman <laughs> that had a... Uh, uh, that that was a nice lady, and I went up there, but it didn't work out between us. And then I uh, went to a club called the Blue Note. 
Blue Note on Paris Avenue. Okay, I took a I took Stevie Wonder to the club that night. You took Stevie Wonder <laughs> to the Blue Note. Yeah, he was playing at the exhibition, and uh, 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 Larry Larry Gideon was my friend. He was a trumpet player for okay. Stevie. Okay, yeah, and Big Jackie. Um, but I took them all. I took the whole band uh, uh, down to the club Blue Note. Okay, and. Uh, uh, we were uh, all in Blue Note. Stevie even performed there uh, that really? night. That yeah. night? Because, yeah. you know, Stevie, if it's a stage, and Stevie's nah, going to get up and, oh, and show out. He had the whole club crying. <laughs> he did Ribbons in the Sky. Wow. Yeah, man, the whole club was crying. But anyway, that's how I met Drake's mother. She just happened to be there. At the Blue Note? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mom, she, uh, I was looking for a cigarette from the bartender. <laughs> and I, I asked the bartender, where could I get a pack of cigarettes? And uh Sandy happened to be standing right next to me when I asked, and she said, "Here, have one of mine." You know, like, and, and the rest so, is history. Uh, we started talking, and uh, <laughs> that's where the baby came from. <laughs> <laughs> and a young Drake was born after a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> no nah, man, I I love it, and this is the thing we got to talk about because we having a lot of fun with a close personal conversation uh, with Dennis Graham. But I'm so intrigued not only about the musicality that you instilled into your son because we already touched on that, right. but we got to talk about it because from one player to another, and, and and clearly you you pass that DNA to your son as well. The ladies, like even still to this day, man, like I see you in the club, it's nothing but women around you. Like what what is the the magnetism that you and your son possess when it comes to these women. Oh God, I am. Um, I'm just a. I'm a saint. I don't do that. <laughs> you see the <laughs> humbleness, the humble saint. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let you know I ain't no saint. I got a problem. <laughs> so, you know what? I uh, love women in a different type of way, man. And I, I feel like you I, cut from a similar cloth. I do. I mean, like you, you, you know, it, it's amazing that the fact that. Because of who you are, you have, uh, I have young girls coming at me like, uh, I've seen it. Uh, I've, seen it. <laughs> I've seen them all ages be flocking around you. I, I, like you a statue. <laughs> like, listen, they listen. be perched on you. I'm not going to allow them to kill me. I mean, like, they're trying to kill me out here. <laughs> Don't let them. Don't let them, man. They got pills for that. That can, that can make sure you do all right out here. They're trying to kill me. But where does that come from, man? Where does like I mean, clearly you they they're drawn to your son. They're drawn to you. Is that just is it is it game? Do y'all be dropping isms on them, or are y'all just lovable guys? Or what what is it? I, what did I, you 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 passed on the golden something to your son? I want to know what it is. Yeah. I, I I think it's just uh, uh, being humble, you know. Really, and, and knowing knowing uh, bullshit when you hear it. There it is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 you know they, but, what to say, what not to say. I mean, you you you, you know the game. Then you get just heard uh, the secret. Uh, uh, from from the OG OG Graham just said the the, the secret is you you got to be humble and, and no bullshit when you hear it yeah. know what to say and what not to say to these young ladies you understand me one time you know you on the wrong train but you on the right track you know what I'm saying you got to tell them no when to jump on you know what I mean same old soup just reheating it you know you can't do the same things you've been doing baby you keep repeating it <laughs> put that Memphis on them one time you gotta put that Memphis on them baby man so we had we were having a great time uh, with Mr. Dennis Graham Graham, he he done shared some amazing stories with us. Um, but you you see you asked me like man, what you got on that bulletproof vest? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should, 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 should you have one? We do this thing called the firing squad here, where I shoot straight from the hip, just ask some questions about mm-hmm. life in general, and you give us that great wisdom that you got. Right. Uh, however you want to answer them, just take it for what it is. First question, we always start off with this one: loved or feared? Which one would you rather be? Loved. Loved. Yeah. That's the secret to it. No, but if you get out of line with me, also fear me. Mm. Oh. See, See that's, that, that's, that, that's that good game right there. It's, it's that Graham game right there. <laughs> now, speaking of fear, what's Dennis Graham's greatest fear? I have no fears. Mm, fearless. No, I have no fears. I, I, I You shot that to me right away, mm-hmm. but I can't think of a fear that I have. Mm. Um. Ain't nothing wrong with I that. I don't fear people. I don't fear 
uh, um, any illness. I don't. I, I don't have any fear. It's a beautiful thing. I'm right there with you. I got fearless tattooed on my shoulder. I look in the yeah. mirror. It reminds me every single day. Yeah. Now we lighten it up a little bit. Favorite movie. Uh, the Equalizer. The Equalizer. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. With movie. Denzel. I've been looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like you got a little too. Equalizer in you. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ain't gonna mess with you. Just break a bitch down one time, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, best piece of advice you've ever received. Uh, never take a wooden nickel. <laughs> my my father be saying the same thing. <laughs> Don't fall for the wooden nickels. He always say, I never know what the fuck he was talking about. But, <laughs> hey, son, don't, don't fall for a wooden nickel. He tell me that and he always talking about he about to go see a man about a horse. I don't know what the fuck that mean either. <laughs> <laughs> don't fall for a wooden nickels mean don't let nobody put no fast ones on you. <laughs> right? That's like, you don't fall for no wood nickels. Because at a time, I guess back in the day, you have real money and then you have wooden money, and they would like give you, like, if they tipping you, if you shine in shoes or something, they would throw in wooden nickels and they're not worth nothing. That's usually uh, women that say they're going to see a man, man about, about a horse. horse. Right. Uh, uh, men would say, I'm going to see a woman about a cow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see? see? Yeah. Real game right there. Go see a man about a horse uh, or a woman about a cow. I'm going to have sex. <laughs> 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 you done broke down the game. You done broke down the game. That's that grand game right there. <laughs> I love it. So, so all right, uh, we said that was the best piece of advice. What's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Continue to go into the damn music business. Mm. Wow. Really? Wow. Why would that be the, the the worst piece? I mean, you've been a musician all your life. I know, but you just uh, beat Drake in a, in a, you <laughs> with your new I, single. I, 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 uh, I, yeah, you're absolutely right. But uh, I started off in a, a medical school. Really? University of Tennessee, a, a medical school. I was uh, a gung ho on being a doctor. Wow. Wow. Well, so. Uh, that's fascinating. So and you know, you know what, Doctor Graham. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. So, I, so, but you just—I mean, clearly, because if you didn't follow the music, we probably wouldn't have Drake today. Exactly. Exactly. See, I, I uh, started off in music, then I got into uh, UT, University of Tennessee, and um, I went. I couldn't do it. I got back into music. Right. So uh, I, uh, um, my advice to go ahead and finish medical school and all that was uh, something that I couldn't follow. Right. You know what I mean? Understood. Because music was instilled in me. I, it's what I, I wanted it so bad. Right. You know, like, so I, I had to suffer the consequences. You know? And I, I think you made a great decision. My, so I did. <laughs> there it is. So we always say this. There's an island, right? St- uh, stranded on an island. And you only could take three things. What are those three things that you're taking with you? Water. Good smart. A woman. There it is. And a pack of cigarettes. There it is. That uh, you, you heard it right there. A woman, water, and something to smoke on. Uh, uh, now we we go here. Favorite cuss word. Motherfucker. <laughs> he says it so gangster too. Motherfucker. <laughs> That's how you say. It. If you can't say motherfucker like that, you shouldn't be saying it. Mother. Fucker. That just you don't want you don't mess with somebody who's saying it like that. It's some consequences that's coming after that motherfucker. I tell you, now, I love it. We having a great time. We in the firing squad, and uh, we we have so many questions. You you just hit me with the answer to my next question. Um, so I'm gonna just go here. Worst job you've ever had? I actually, at the age of 15, went to pick cotton. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's heavy. <laughs> that sounds that you probably won the worst jobs yeah. of we yeah. asked this to everybody. That's Dennis Graham just said his worst uh, job was picking I, cotton. I, I tried it as a kid because uh back back then it was so bad for us that I um I had seen all these older black people do it, uh get up every morning at six uh, five or six o'clock to be at a certain spot to for the bus to pick them up. So I I, I said, well, God, I, don't, I need money. I got to try something. Right. So 
this was my first time uh, ever doing it. So they would pick us up. They they pick you up at five, four or five o'clock in the morning. And uh, so my cousin and I decided we were gonna do it. Um, we got out to the. Uh, they took us way over in, uh, from Memphis to Arkansas. Wow. To uh, some cross state big line, big field, big field, like all this cotton. And it's probably what we would think a uh, uh, cotton field would look like, like right. on a plantation. And they gave you a, a, a hose to chop the chop the uh, cotton down. Wow. Um, but my cousin and I, we we were there. I think we started probably around six o'clock. But we took the hoes and uh, used them as microphones. We started singing <laughs> the Temptations. So we got on the fired. cotton field. We got fired after twenty minutes of being in the cotton field. Hey, that's that's how you hold it down. <laughs> yeah. They fired us. They put us on the bus. They wouldn't let us come back out. Hey, hey shoot, I wouldn't be. I got went out to the cotton we field and started singing the Temptations. We damn were it, singing the Temptations uh, uh, with the hoes. And they fired us right away. Yeah, yeah. hey, that's a great story though. That's how listen, you stick listen, it to the man. I'm so glad they fired me. I would <laughs> never want to ever do that again in my life. I, I mean, I did it for 10 minutes. <laughs> he no. picked cotton for 10 minutes and said, no, this shit no, ain't for no, me. No, this is not for <laughs> me, partner. I love no. it. Now, um, your prized possession, your most prized possession, what would that be? <sighs> your mustache? Life. Oh. <laughs> right. uh, that, not, see, that's, that's too euphoric. I'm talking like an actual possession. We know life is precious. Uh, I'm saying, what is it something that you have that you only like, no, I can't let go of this? Because I always thought it was the mustache. I'm trying to grow mine out like yours. Like, I'm trying to get get to that. That's that Graham mustache, that uh, Larry Graham, a, Dennis it's, Graham. It's fertilizing. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I know you know. No, you know. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I created something to go on. <laughs> you are hilarious. All right, so. <laughs> Y'all got it way too late. Let it fertilize, girl. <laughs> I love it. It is grab is an OG for real. This is fertilizer, girl. Let me tell you one time. Now, since we right there, because let's keep rolling. What's your guilty pleasure? What's my guilty pleasure? Yeah. Mm, my God, that's a tough question. What's my guilty pleasure? Man, I can't answer that. See, I thought I thought we was go. We was talking about the fertilizer. I thought we was gonna go right to the ladies. I know that's that's definitely my guilty pleasure. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, that that uh, that that's right up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like over the years, I'll be like, that's my that's my grace and my downfall has been has been women the entire time. It's kept me going, kept me motivated, but then it also it had me in the corner crying at night too. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <clears throat> writing them Drake songs, writing listening to them emotional. Records. Records. You know what? I, uh, I, you know, my guilty pleasure right now is I just bought a new Akai MPC. The drum machine. No, Akai MPC. Yeah, Live. yeah. No, it's a uh, digital audio workstation. Oh, the, and, oh, the uh, whole uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. I, and um, I use reasons to make my the beats. Uh, beats. Yeah. Uh, at first. So you're but in there. Now I just bought it. all in there, Akai. Akai MPC yeah. Live. And it, and I've I've had to start all over again. This is with your new library from yeah. a baby. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And now I've had it for two or three months. Right. And I I'm so proud of myself right now because I'm killing it on there it. There it is, man. I'm Con making, congratulations. Making. We heard it. That's that on that. We I know we got some more hits coming. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's funny that you say that about the Akai and the workstations. I started from the MPC 60 all the way to now that it is digital. I have a whole wall in my studio of like right. all the Akai stuff. So I know once you dive in, man, you just you, you figure it all out. So we can't wait to hear more of them Dennis Graham OG classics. Coming, That's that on that. Coming. And lastly, Coming. We ended with this in the firing squad. The one word that describes you the best would be what? Crazy. <laughs> Sound like my daddy. Right there. We got crazy Dennis Graham in the building. It's been up close and personal conversations. Nick Cannon mornings is Power 106. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you, baby. I love you. Love you back. <laughs> <laughs>